What's the story? John. Let's read John chapter 4. We start from verse 10 to 26. Jesus answered and said to her, This is the woman in uh, in Samaria. If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the, the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it, its, from it himself, as well as his sons and his uh, livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me, give me this water, that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw, nor come here to draw. Sorry. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you, you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to, to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither or this uh, on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship uh, what you you do not know. We we know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hours is coming and now is when the, the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. Who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to, to her, I who speak to you am he. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for uh, preparing it for us. And we pray at that time and this time that you be with the speaker, our speaker, and you be with your church that will follow to understand your your words and make it. We pray that you make it easy for us 
to, uh, to understand it and to put it in practice. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sam. It says here, Jesus said to her, I who speak to, I am. That's original. That should be original. It's an I am that's missing in the Bible. I am. Really, it should be there. Who speak to you? I mean, you say I am of us, you know. You know about that. That is his, just the, uh, the little Greek with the. There we go. Mm -hmm. We we'll start there at uh, Jacob's well. Uh, is still there, the one that he dug, and uh, maybe not uh, he originally finished off. He didn't finish it off, maybe like that. Uh, but uh, uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, a picture of it. Uh, uh, there, you know, it uh, was about a hundred feet deep. And uh, she did tell Jesus the well was very deep. How was, you going, how was he going to get that water out? And he, he had nothing to carry the water, you know. Anyway, we, 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 uh, we thought already about that he travelled up from Galilee uh, to, uh, that was the, what, the village of, uh, oh, well, in Galilee anyway, eh? Cain of Galilee. And he went from Cana of Galilee up to Jerusalem. And that would be that's about uh, 90 miles from Nazareth to, to it. So it was quite a, a journey. And uh, uh, then they were back then, you see. And of course, they went through Samaria. Who go through Samaria? What real Jew would go through Samaria? Huh? <laughs> Would they? They'd avoid it, wouldn't they? Even the dust would shake it off their feet. But anyway, he said he must needs go through Samaria in the, the old version, you know? Right. So, how many Samaritans are there today? You can look it up yourself, of course. You that are bright sparks online, you know? Uh, how many are they today? Well, there, there's around about 800. Some said over 500, maybe around about over 800, you know. Not much more, it's got very small. Some were deported to Assyria in 712 BC. Replaced by the Assyrians who intermarried with a minority left behind. That's why they are half, you know, Jews, or half uh, Israelites, uh, uh, and called then Samaritans because they're centered around Samaria. Right. So today we're thinking of the wonderful provision that we're getting it there. We are. It's a bit washed out this nearly a bit. A wonderful provision and the section is uh, 4, 10 to 26. Well, we ask the question, well, who is the giver. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Well, she was given Jesus in this case. Would she? Was she going to re re not give it to him? I thought she wouldn't wonder if she should give him to him. Her being a Samaritan, he a Jew, and the Jews in the past don't have any dealings with one another. It does happen in Ireland, doesn't it? Yeah, no. Shouldn't. It shouldn't happen in Ireland because uh, we said on fr Friday night, didn't we, that, uh, you know, Jesus wasn't politically prejudiced. He wasn't uh, socially prejudiced. He wasn't racially prejudiced. No prejudice at all in Jesus. Isn't that great? That's the wonderful saviour we have to think about this morning. Are we come excited about that? Are we going to get enthused about that? Because that's the story. What's the story? That's the story. The story's all about who? Jesus. Right. So, the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? 
For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. It was a no-go area. It was very sad. But that was it. And the Jews were responsible for many things they did that. And they had to go into exile because of the neglect of the widow women and the orphans and different ones. You know, their care of slavery, slaves, or those who had, were supposed to help. There would be no such a thing as slavery, really, but it was there too. But of course, they don't mix these two. No mixing at all. We have a wonderful story that Jesus told of the Good Samaritan, don't we? He was quite an example. So Jesus has her full attention, doesn't he? It's great when Jesus gets her full attention. Mm. And he really gets us uh, excited. Hey, not right. Enthused. The giver's gift is the first thing we're going to think about here. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked. And he would have what? Given you living water. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? And so she reasons, verse 11, well, he's got no vessel. Uh, uh, how is he going to get this living water? The well's deep. He'd have to go to the source then, would he? To find that. And he thinks, are you greater than our father Jacob, who uh, gave us this well? Verse 12. And he and his sons and his livestock and all, uh, did uh, drink from that. Mm, there. That was quite amazing. Who's then the offerer? Jesus says, Water will not quench your inward thirst. Verse 13. The water and the well will not, you'll get thirsty again. But what about the water he gives? But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into what everlasting life. That's so wonderful, isn't it? That makes us think about this. What does that mean? The spring is the source of water supply, isn't it? It's amazing to see, and I've seen it, you know, in my younger days, the spring bubbling out of the rock. It's quite amazing to see that. And in some cases, they have to dig the wells deep, 100 or 200 feet, uh, really, to get the, the, these uh, springs. You can have an endless supply, you see, you know. That's what he's saying, you know. Uh, uh, and it, is this the use of water an example of the Holy Spirit? Is this use of the water an example of the Holy Spirit? Well, that is a big, that is a question to think about. And how can we have eternal life? Life forever and ever. How can we have this living water? John 7, 37 to 38. Is a is a good uh, is a maybe a good uh, what would we say commentary on it from the Bible on the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried out saying if anyone thirst so we need to be thirsty don't we a thirst let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scriptures have said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Oh, amazing. But this he spoke concerning what? The Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, only those believing in him will receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. 
So the wonderful thing was that Jesus came, died on the cross to pay the price of our sins, and he rose again from the dead, and after 40 days he came, and he uh, poured out, the Holy Spirit was poured out. You know. Of course, the Father and the Son united in the sending of the Holy Spirit, but he said, Jesus said to he would baptize us again with the Holy Spirit. And that's what we, we find that's the, there at conversion is the first moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Who's requesting? Well, that is it. Who is this one who is requesting? It would be great for an unpopular lady like me. Is that what you say? Mm. Why great? Well, she wouldn't have to come to the well to draw it. You know, we thought about it already 12 o'clock in the day. Six hours, 12 o'clock in the day she come. Come when nobody would be going at that time to for water. Nobody would go at the heat of the day, would they? To get the water. No one would go uh, to do that. So she had to trod all the way on her own. She couldn't go with the ladies later in the day. And they'd be looking at her. Hmm, I don't know about her. She'll maybe steal my husband. <laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> you know. Mm. So, a great requester knows everything about us, doesn't he? He knew everything about this lady. He knows all about us today. Every bit about us, you know. Nothing he doesn't know. He knows our thoughts are far off. Interesting. Tomorrow, the next day, 10 years, he knows what you're thinking. He knows it all. He knows all about this lady, how many husbands she's had, and the one she has is not her husband, and all that, you know. He lovingly and politely asks her for a, about her husband. He doesn't, you know, back off either. And she confesses she's had no husband. And you know, he does say, yes, that's true. There's no secrets with Jesus, you know. He knows all about us. He knows everything. Yeah, he knows the one she has is not her husband. You know, now. He says, you have answered correctly. That was good, wasn't it? That was important. He, he you see, he, he is all-knowing. He's omniscient. Omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's all seeing, he's all knowing. He sees into the very deep motives of our hearts. He knows our thoughts are far off, Psalm 139. So she perceives him then to be a prophet. Oh, wow. If he, say, he knows all this, then he's, he's not just an ordinary man. He must be a prophet. Now she uses the religious diversion. Yes, let's get him diverted off that, you know. Let's, let's throw in some, some difficulty. Let's get the, the problems now. And she, she talked about the, the religion. Whose religion is right? The Jew or the Gentile? We worship that. Here at Samaria at Mount Gerizim, they worship at uh, Jerusalem. Who's right? You know. The wonderful provider says, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 21. Quite amazing. Not, either, not in either of these places, even though that salvation is of the Jew, and it means really it comes through the Jew. He's cradled the Saviour. 
Some say that uh, uh, Hitler hated the Jews because he crucified them. It wasn't really because he crucified them. It's because they, they cradled them. <laughs> Brown there. And so all we need to know there, we're learning through the Jews and through the background of Judaism. So salvation, of course, is of the Jews, means it's through them. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Friends, what does that mean? In spirit and in truth. Well, you see, the, the problem here is we need the Holy Spirit and we need the Word of God, the truth. And if we have the Spirit without the Word, we can go overboard in the wrong way. But if we have the, and if we have just the Word then, well, we get it dry. I have to watch that, don't I? Not get dry and dull and, and, and you know, head, head into, uh, well, you get stuck in Greek or something like that, you know? And all sorts of that, uh, you know, mental and, uh, what do you call it, uh, knowledge and understanding. But it has to be the spirit and the truth, the two together, guiding and directing us. God is spirit, he says, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Two together will lead you, keep you right. Not one without the other. Because without the Spirit you will go dry and dull. Lifeless and sad. Maybe the difference between a long-faced Christian and a joyful Christian. Eh? How does she know that Messiah will come? How does she know about that? Well, you see, the Samaritans, we looked at this already, have, and maybe again tonight, uh, the Samaritans have and believe in the Pentateuch, the five, first five books of Moses. They have that, they have, show that they have the scrolls, the pride in that. And they would have told them about the Messiah. You know, there's references there to him, the seed of the woman, uh, the appearances to Abraham. Uh, pre appearances to Abraham, where he was known to be the angel of the Lord, the Lord, and address them uh, that, you know. And uh, uh, also, of course, then you see, uh, uh, you know, Moses speaking, the, the Lord, uh, you know, Moses said, the Lord would raise up to a, a prophet like him, uh, you know, him shall you hear. In the uh, in Deuteronomy. How does she know that Messiah will come? Well, she would have taken it in from there. She knew that he was coming and would tell her all things and explain all things. The great thing is we have the one who explains all things. My friends, that's what the story is all about. John is the great storyteller. And who is he, who is he talking about? He's talking about the main character. The main character is who? Yeah, Jesus. That is the main character of it all. That's what the wee boy said. Yeah. The, man, the preacher says, to, says, I had this bag and, and he says, I'd like you to guess, you know, what's in this bag. Or would anybody guess? And so wee boy puts up, he says, mister, he says, I think the answer is Jesus, but I'm not mistaken, uh, there must be a teddy bear in that bag. <laughs> so, the wonderful provision. The wonderful provision. <coughs> it is. He is wonderful. Isn't he? How is his name wonderful? Is there any proof of that? There's different, Jesus has got different names 
How could his name be wonderful? Do you ever think about it? In Judges 3, 13, 18, And the angel of the Lord said to him, that was to Samson's father, when Samson's father and mother were told, she was told, first of all, you're going to have a baby. You're going to be special. He's going to be a Nazarite. Wow, well, all babies are special, aren't they? They had to go and see, and, uh, and then asked, well, who, who, what's your name? And the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name? Seeing it is, what? Wonderful. Wonderful. His name is Wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Got your story? That your story? Yeah. That what you tell people? Right. And his name will be called what? In Isaiah 9 6. Wonderful. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Another name. For Jesus. Jesus gives a living water, verse 10, and in Isaiah it speaks about that, 12 3. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. You mightn't show it much. Oh, I'm so happy that you have the answer to life. You have the peace and the joy within. With joy you will draw water from the wells of of salvation. And this lady is here learning about the wells of salvation as she's coming to Jesus who is wonderful. So he could have said, I'm going nothing to do with you. I don't want to talk to you even. But Jesus wouldn't do that, would he? No. He, he wanted to. He had a word for her. And he, he was so concerned. What was going to happen? What we'll see, the result of it all, is quite amazing at the village of Sakha. What? Amazing. He looked out and saw the fields white for harvest. How were the white for harvest? It was all those souls from the village of Sakha coming out, white in the countryside, all coming to see this man who is wonderful. He is is she, is he the Messiah? Some people have got the actual water out of Jacob's well, but it cannot save them. Oh, we, we talked, we had a wonderful chat with a lady uh, up the country. And uh, she'd been to a meeting and they were talking about, uh, you know, the Jacob's well and the woman at the well and all that. And she sat up and she thought, oh, she says, I have got something better than the morn. I have got a, a real water from the well. I've got a bottle of real water. And she thought she had. What was most important to her? What's most important to you? And there it was. She, she, that's what she told us. And she wanted to know who these folks were, these ones who were meeting in their home uh, down the road a bit. We need salvation from God's well, don't we? That's where it comes from. Salvation is in who? Christ alone. We need our souls refreshed, renewed, revitalized. You get refreshed again, renewed, helped. Right. The Apostle John is a very special storyteller, isn't he? Mm. How do you, what do you think about his stories right through the Gospel of John? He's the storyteller. He portrays well the main character, doesn't he? And who is the main character? The wonderful <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ. Right. What a story. The woman of Samaria will have for all in Sychar. Ah, there's going to be a change there, aren't there? 
wonder will we see about that. We'll have to come back and see that eh? tonight. It portrays the lovely character of the Lord Jesus, doesn't it? In all his wonderful character and love and feeling and blessing. We don't ever make enough about his how loving he is, how caring he is, how concerned he is. Concerned for Mullingar, for Ireland, for all round about. I wonder how any response, and there has been responses to these, uh, these messages. Yet. Will there be those who truly come to a faith in Christ? And so the great hope is that as people will listen on online and whatever it will be, that they will truly come to see the wonderful Lord Jesus who is their saviour and friend. Our oh, gracious God, we thank you for your blessings to us. We pray, O oh Lord, your hand upon us. We pray, Lord, you lead and guide by your Holy Spirit. We pray your blessing. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you are the wonderful saviour. We pray, Lord, you will forgive. And we pray, Lord, your help with the stumbling words and thoughts, Lord, that we may indeed I embrace the beautiful, wonderful Lord Jesus Christ in all his glory and majesty and praise. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen.